Razabani for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to be in Liverpool and more delighted to be with Mr. Edward Hearn. Eddie, how are we doing? I'm really good. I'm really good because let's be honest, this is an unbelievable show. And I love great shows. So sometimes you put a show together, it's, it's good, but you know you've done better. And top to bottom, one of the best shows we've put on on Saturday night. And I can't wait. I can't wait for to see the crowd. I can't wait to be in Liverpool. I can't wait to see the fights unfold breathtaking main event, stack card and uh, buzzing for Saturday. Let's talk about some of the fights. Obviously, I've just been speaking to Scott Quigg and Andy yeah. Crawler, legends of this of the North. Um, what does Liam get from fighting someone like Anthony, considering yeah. the level that Liam has been at? I think that the fascinating thing about this fight and, and you know, talking to him upstage is Liam, he almost felt a little bit offended when I offered him this fight. You know, he wanted the Kerbinov rematch. He wanted to fight Jesse Vargas, and I came in and said, "Well, what about Anthony Fowler?" And he went, "Mate, I want to, you know, I want to win a world title, but sometimes fights just make sense." Anthony Fowler, on the other hand, he's saying to me, "I want a big fight. Give me Cheeseman. Give me Leharaja. You know, give me Sergio Garcia." And then, like I said, it was literally as simple as me looking at Boxrec. Number one in the country, Liam Smith. Number two in the country, Anthony Fowler. They're both scousers. How obvious can it be? And once everyone got their head around that, once everyone realised there was a lot of money in this fight because we're going to sell the place out, you know, everyone sort of started to get on board with it. So it's an interesting dynamic because that, and that's why I was asking the questions in the presser. How much do you want it? You know, and, and it's going to be really interesting because it's going to get horribly tough on Saturday night. Really tough. Dirty, probably. And tough. And it's going to come down to how much you want it. Liam Smith, by far the more experienced in the pro game. You know, um, Anthony Fowler, a little bit inexperienced, lost to Scott Fitzgerald, come back, looks great. Shane McGuigan's done a great job, strong, punches hard. It's going to be a war in there. And, and it's, you know, Joe McAnally said, and he's quite right, Anthony Fowler's just come round the back and he's got a shot, like, the, in a fight that will put him probably top five in the world, out of nowhere. And he's doing it in his home city against another scouser. Just the perfect fight. Do you think experience is going to be a key factor in this fight? Always is. Always is. But, you know, there's other things that, that can negate experience. Punch power, tenacity, strength. But Liam is unquestionably the more experienced fighter here, you know, and he, he will want to use that to his advantage. Um, a lot of people talking about Fowler's going to be very dangerous in the first six or seven rounds. I think that the more Liam Smith gets into the fight, his experience could show. But Fowler's fit as well. You know, he's been doing the rounds, he's lived the life. I think a lot will come down to how they handle the pressure. I think for Liam, he's boxed, look, he boxed Canelo in front of 60,000. Like, he's experienced a lot in his career. For Fowler, that's why I asked him the question in the presser, this is a little bit like the first time, you know, the Fitz fight was a bit wild, but this is another level. This is 10,000 sellout. Could have sold it out three times. Everyone's talking about this fight, you know, whether in, you're in the UK or whether in, you're, you're in Liverpool, of course. So, so much to play for in that respect. And, uh, you know, it's going to be it's going to be fascinating. I can't wait for that first bell to go because you know how this fight's going to play out, and it's going to be thrilling. Stat card, obviously, Cheeseman and and Williamson. Yeah. I spoke to Williamson now, and he's so confident, so up for it, so game. But Cheeseman, like you said, 26 years old, but it looks like he's been around forever. Well, yes. I mean, it's his 26 fight. Uh, sorry, he's 26 years old. This is his seventh consecutive 12 round championship fight. Like he's he's and he's boxed for the European title. He's boxed away for the British title. He's boxed internationally. Um, he's, you know, he's come through wars. He's, he's experienced everything, and I think Ted is a good example to fighters that sometimes it don't have to be perfect. Yeah, you know, the, the destination, and I don't think he's fi he's at his final destination, but the journey, you know, can go so many different ways. It's like when you type it into Waze or Google Maps, they'll give you three or four different options. Right? Option number one is the smooth one. Might take you a little bit longer but there's not going to be any traffic, no hazards, no bumps. You're going to have an easy ride to get to your final destination. And option B is going over the dirt tracks, right? And actually fucking your, your, your chassis up on the way, but battling through and getting there quicker than you would otherwise. So there's different routes to the destination. I quite like that, by the way. I thought that was really good. Um, and that's what Ted's done. Ted's jumped in early. He's been out of his depth. He was only young when he was some, having some of those fights. Sergio Garcia, what was he, 22, 23? Um, this is a fascinating fight because Troy Williamson, very strong, very rugged, punches very hard. But then we go back to what we said before, experience. 
the championship experience lies with Ted Cheeseman in this fight. He has been looking unbelievable in the gym, like a machine. He's so confident because of those experiences he's had. And going back to my ways and Google Maps analogy, when you get in those fights after you've taken those different routes, the ones that are tougher to beat are the ones that went down the dirt track, right? Not the ones that just cruised there and didn't really. So for Troy, he's never had to really go to the well. Fair play to him because he's, he's stopped people. He's looked good doing it. We find out about Troy Williamson. We know about Ted Cheeseman. We find out about Troy Williamson. But can you see that being anything but a cracking fight? Um, and and I, I believe Ted Cheeseman will remain British champion on Saturday. Ladies world title, Shannon Courtney and Jamie Mitchell. Jamie didn't have too much to say. The Americans normally do this sometimes. Yeah, I wanted her to tell her story because it's quite inspiring. I mean, she was left by her parents in, in a foster home as a kid. Um, unbelievably ended up, and you'll have to check this story with her. This is what I was told by our media department, so I'm passing the buck. Um, ended up meeting a girl in the, uh, the foster home, which actually turned out to be her sister, which she didn't know, and, and had it real, real super tough. Inexperienced as a pro, but a really good amateur. And if you watch her, great fundamentals, like very talented boxer. This is a really tough fight for Shannon Courtney. Shannon's tough and she's, you know, she's gained experience, great win against Bridges, but she can get a little bit rugged at times. And I'll tell you, I mean, Jamie Mitchell scared me. You know, she ain't here to muck around. She's here to try and change her life and become world champion. And good luck to her as well. You know, we love Shannon and, and I believe she's going to defend her belts successfully on Saturday. But I really expect a tough fight against Jamie Mitchell, a well-schooled American with a good team and Brian Cohen and those guys back in town. They're going for it and, and they're trying to cause a shock on Saturday. I want to go through the rest of the card. I'll, I'll, give, I'll put the mic in front of you. But obviously Solomon, Rihanna Dixon, yeah. you've got Natasha Jonas. Yeah from top to bottom stacked yeah absolutely I mean uh, you look at the, the first TV we've we got so many great fights that some of them are going to have to go on the stream and two of those that stand out on the stream before stream globally is Luke Willis against Ryland Charlton brilliant fight eliminator for the domestic lightweight title uh, and Camille Sokolowski against Solomon Dakers really good heavyweight fight as well then you go into the main broadcast and you've got uh, JJ Metcalf against um, Kieran Conway. Brilliant fight. I mean, JJ was just in a fight of the year contender with Ted Cheeseman. Um, Kieran Conway coming off a defeat in Texas against Suleiman Suzoko, but, you know, came in late, had a huge amount of experience. JJ Metcalf fighting in front of 10,000 Scousers. It's going to be a wild atmosphere, and, and that's a brilliant fight as well. And, of course, the professional debut of Peter McGraw as well, who one of the best amateurs Liverpool's ever produced. OK, well, we look forward to the show on Saturday night, Eddie. There's so much more else to go over. Where should we start? Let's start off with the announcement by the WBC first that Dylan White, winner of Dylan White and Otto Waller, will become the mandatory for Deontay Wilder and Fury, the winner of that fight. A bit of confusion because he did a couple of interviews and a lot of different tweets have been floating around. Then he's come out and said that the winner will get 30 days to pursue the Usyk fight for the undisputed. After 30 days, if it's not established, then they have to go, have to fight against the winner of Otto Wallin and White. Is that correct? And what is your understanding? I mean, we haven't had any official paperwork on it, but I've seen some stuff and in interviews and stuff like that. I think your interpretation sounds about right. Um, ultimately, Dillian White will be mandatory for the winner of Wilder against Fury. That, that's what he deserves. Um, I think that Dillian White's team will need to push on that and make sure that the, the wording is correct and, and you know he's not going to roll over and accept something that's not fair. Um, but if he gets a shot at the winner of Fury and Wilder, fantastic news. Um, we know that AJ has a rematch clause. We expect that fight to take place in March. I do not see in any scenario uh, with AJ being fit to fight that he, he does not fight Alexander Usyk. You know, I spoke to Bob last night. He called me. And, you know, talked about the possibility of, you know, maybe stepping aside. I don't, you know, Josh, don't step aside, you know. Um, whilst he's fit to fight, and he is, like, he, that's the fight he's taking. All he's thinking about is revenging Alexander Usyk. So, we'll see what happens. I, I just said to Bob last night, look, get Saturday out of the way first. We've seen a couple of Saturdays before. Anything can happen. Um, and anything can happen in that fight. But certainly, light at the end of the rainbow for Dillian White. We won't take anything for granted until we see it in black and white. But, obviously, uh, big moments ahead for Dillian White. I know you've gone on record to say that Dillian was going to pursue the WBC, the legal route. Mm. Did that have implications on why Maurice Suleiman has come out now to say, well, I, I this is the I, case? I don't know. I mean, I, you know, certainly he's been putting the pressure on, and rightly so. I mean, enough's enough. Um, you know, I think I'm never... I, th I think 
the, the governing bodies do a great job. Sometimes you don't always agree with what they say, but they have a very difficult job where they've got people like me, and there's six or seven of me's who are on them all the time, want this opportunity for this fire. We're pushing, we're pushing. You said that, you said this. So we're not always going to get on. I respect them and I respect the fact that and Mauricio Sudaman is someone that grew up in boxing. He loves the sport of boxing. It doesn't mean that I have to agree with every decision he makes. I'm sure he doesn't agree with every decision I make. But on this instance, we have to make sure that justice is served. And justice is Dillian White fighting the winner of Deontay Wilder against Tyson Fury. No exceptions, no, nothing. Let's get that fight made. And it's not like, you know, am I missing something here? It's not like it ain't a great fight. It's not like it won't sell out any arena around the world. It's not like it won't do a million pay-per-view buys. It's a massive fight. Yes, we know Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury. You're going to have your hands full, mate, with Dillian White. But that's all right. So hopefully Tyson Fury wins on Saturday and then finally Dillian White gets his shot. Ed, I know, uh, I'll, I'll come back to White in a second, but Josh has always talked about the road to undisputed. Now, we all talked about if, if Fury Joshua did fight the first time round, the second time round, the belts probably have to get vacated for the rematch to take place. Did any conversations take place with Andrew Joshua to say, look, this is what Bob's offering. Let the winner of Fury Wilder fight Usyk and you're guaranteed a shot for the undisputed title. I mean, firstly, all we have at the moment is words. Secondly, I mentioned Bob Arum's comments to Anthony Joshua, and before I even ended the sentence, I just got absolutely no way. No way. He doesn't, you know, he wants to be undisputed, but he wants to put the wrong right. He wants to fight Alexander Usyk right now and beat him. That's the only thing in his mind. So, yeah, look, I just said to Bob, look, have your fight, but I'm just telling you at the moment, at the moment, absolutely no way. No way. Josh wants to fight Usyk, and Josh wants to beat Usyk, and then he'll fight for the undisputed. He wants, in his head, he wants to put that right. So let's let's anything can happen. Let's let's get these fights out of the way. Big fight, you know, Tyson against Wilder. Big fight, White against Wilding. Let's let's make sure they go our way on both counts and for Britain, and uh, see where we land. With the way the WBC have acted in certain divisions regarding the franchise, are you sceptical and in the back of your mind that potentially? They may elevate yes. the winner to franchise and Dylan will fight number, yeah. number two. Yeah. Anything's possible. I mean, I had that argument last night with Tiafimo's dad. You know, I announced the great news that Matchroom have got Tiafimo Lopez against George Cambosa's fight on DAZN, the unified championship, and Tiafimo's dad sent me a message straight away. Oi, it's undisputed. I said, Devin Hayne is a WBC champion. You can't. If you're a WBC franchise champion... That is not recognised by the other governing bodies as the undisputed championship. So, it's fact. Tiafimo should be the undisputed champion. In my opinion, and actually factually, he's not. And Tiafimo's dad will say, well, speak to Maurizio. He'll tell you he is. But he, it's, it's not up to, to Maurizio to tell you that a WBC franchise championship is, a, is allowable on the undisputed trail because it's not recognised in that, in that sense. So, please, God, do they not make the winner of Fury Wilder. Um, you know, and also, if you look at the wording of the agreement, uh, or the statement, it says that the winner of that fight must fight Dillian White. Not Dillian White will fight for the WBC Championship. It's the winner of that fight. So I don't think there's an out in that respect, and there shouldn't be either. The franchise is just giving someone a pass to not face a dangerous mandatory. That's not what boxing's all about. If that's the case, you might as well have no governing bodies because you're not allowing people to progress up the rankings and get their shots. Devin Haney, all he ever wanted to do was fight Vasily Lomachenko. So he chased the WBC to get up the rankings to win a final eliminator, and finally he got his shot at Lomachenko. And top rank turned around and said to the WBC, we'd like you to make Lomachenko the franchise champion so we can avoid Devin Haney. That's the truth. And by the way, it wasn't Lomachenko's idea. I agree. He said, I, I didn't request it. I believe him. Because they said, no, make him franchise and we'll make an in-house fight with Tiafimo Lopez and we won't have to fight Devin Haynes. It's a game. But that's what happened. And, and if you allow that franchise situation, you allow those things to happen. So what do you have to do now for Dylan to get this in writing, to get the actual facts from Marisa? That's all going on, you know, with, with, with the lawyers at the moment. And look, it looks like a step in the right direction. So thank you to Maurizio. And, uh, you know, we hope that Dillian White obviously is focused on the Otto Wilding fight. It's a tough fight. He needs to win that fight. And uh, I believe he will. And it will make the other fight even bigger when he faces off against Wilder or Fury. Obviously, Wilder Fury all was nice and spicy yesterday at the press conference. Wilder finally decided to take his headphones off. 
Does it make a difference to you now who wins that fight? I want Tyson Fury to win that fight. You know, he's, he's a Brit. I think he's absolutely hilarious. I could watch him all day at press conferences. I think he's so funny. Um, and, you know, I, I enjoyed... I watched the press conference yesterday. I enjoyed the arguments about Kate Abdo. Then you've got Bob Arum swearing at Kate Abdo. And then you've got Bob Arum swearing at Mike Coppinger. And this is the heavyweight circus. And you don't have to agree with everything, but it's, it, we're talking. And um, I'll be watching because it's an important fight for the division. It's an important fight for British boxing, and I hope Tyson Fury wins. Fury offered his services to Anthony Joshua to train him for the Alexander Usyk fight. Is uh, has Josh made a comment? No, no. Everyone's an expert, aren't they? You know, I'll I'll, I'll show Josh how to beat him. You know, so um, yeah, I don't think we'll be in the Fury camp for, for that rematch. Um, but everyone's got their ideas about how to beat Alexander Usyk. It's not that easy because Usyk's a great and he's brilliant at what he does but there's ways to fight and there's ways not to fight unfortunately Josh chose the one the wrong way um, doesn't mean that he can just switch styles and, and walk through but you know I, I believe Josh knows what he has to do to beat Alexander Usyk and uh, that won't involve the coaching services of Tyson Fury I don't believe and you, you in the past have, have paid people to step aside in, in many divisions in boxing not, not really not, honestly, not really. In fact, like maybe at a smaller level, because sometimes the money matters to people, right? There's no amount of money that you could offer Anthony Joshua that would make him go, oh, look at Deontay Wilder as well. And I have to give Wilder his credit. I'm not sure Wilder would have stepped aside. They didn't even really try, which was frustrating. But honestly, like I think he's just got it in his head. I just want my, I want to get my hands on Tyson Fury. And that makes you dangerous in that rematch. Because Fury don't want to fight Wilder. He ain't bothered about it. He's beaten him twice. But Wilder wants to fight Fury. So that, that, that adds a little bit of a different dynamic. So there's been occasions, perhaps, where you've given someone a different fight and stuff like that. But honestly, like, it, it would never be about the money for AJ. You know? and, and like I said, while he's fit, ready, and he is, that's, that's the fight. And, and he will say, no, no, I'll beat Usi, then I'll fight you. You know, you're not jumping into fight undisputed when I've got my rematch, and this, this is what I want to do. So, to be honest, like those conversations haven't even taken place. Will they take place? I very much doubt it. Let's see what happens on Saturday, and then you know we'll sit down. And but right now, all we have in our mind is the rematch. And uh, there's no amount of money that's you know you're not going to go up to Anthony and say, oh, someone's going to give you a few quid, mate, if you just step aside and be quiet, because there's no guarantees. Yeah, you've got a contract to fight the winner. You, they have the fight. He retires. Right, I don't, I'm undisputed now. Don't want to fight anymore. Bye. And then you should think, him, what? What have I done? I don't trust any of those guys. So I'd rather know and plan the plan that we have, which is a solid contract for that rematch. It's acknowledged by K2. They know, and they're happy to do the rematch. So let's get it on. We are with that. I know it's early, early days, but something you want to get signed, sealed, and done straight away in terms of locations, destinations, timings, dates. Where are we? with Joshua Usyk oh uh, we're nowhere yeah I mean we've just finished the fight um, Josh had some niggles in camp as he always does like I so said he's a heavyweight boxer he'll fix them over the next couple of weeks uh, Usyk had a terrible cut I think March is the, the realistic time frame for the fight and uh, we'll, I'll sit down I've already spoke to Alex Krasuk and said I'll sit down with uh, him in, uh, when he's back from holiday and we'll start planning a rematch Ed have you ever gone on like Instagram live sitting down and have a woman massage your face and, and talk about people. <laughs> I don't remember referring to the Oscar De La Hoya video. He, he referred to you as Thomas, Thomas Hans. Yeah, Thomas yeah. Hans. He's a bizarre cat, you know. I mean, in our big show coming up on November 19th, our World Championship triple header, we've got three World Championship fights there at the top that are all against Golden Boy guys, all right? The problem with boxing is, is that honestly, he wouldn't want the reverse of that because he wouldn't want to give my fighters or Matram an opportunity right it's the weirdest sport in the world and the weird, weirdest business in the world luckily we want to make good fights and you know Quigley gets a shot I like Jason Quigley so I gave him the opportunity uh, Ronnie Rios he's the, the mandatory for Ahmed Madaliev Arroyo against Martinez they're free golden boy fighters free Matram fighters we'll win 3-0 which will be really nice um, but Oscar I never really, he never gets me to bite, you know, I don't know what it is, because I, I respect, like, he was one of my favourite fighters, 
Yeah. It's a bit sad, and I, you know, sometimes I look at him and say, I just, I want him to, you know, I want him to get well. I want him to get better, and I, I want someone to give him a helping hand. But someone needs to grab hold of him and just either take his social media off him because it's just, it's just bizarre stuff. But listen, we're in a circus, right? And he's he's the circus clown. So let him play, and everyone talks. So I, I don't mind. Listen, I say no one knows me in America, but he don't stop talking about me. He's supposed to be this massive star in America. So if he wants to keep talking about me in America, keep going, mate, because I need to raise my profile, a matchroom's profile in America. So I respect him wholly. You know, I like, I like the Golden Boy guys. Robert Diaz is, you know, he's a friend of mine. Eric Gomez, good guy. We continue to make fights, and Oscar's Oscar. I, I like watching him and Dana White go. You know, I just, I'd rather just watch them two. Uh, quick fire ones. Uh, I've got to go as well. Um, you mentioned Lopez and Cambosas. Yes. What a mess with Trilla. They're yes. going to lose their deposit as well. But you're glad it's on the zone. Oh, I mean, when the purse bid came around for that fight, we we we, we went for it. What well, we thought we went for it financially, and we saw this bid coming from Trilla, and it just it, none of it made sense. Um, and it's been a complete talk about circus it's been a complete circus and finally we get the fight brilliant fight you know Lopez one of the biggest stars in the game you know and then you look at that back end of the schedule for DAZN obviously Smith Fowler um, on Saturday night Otto Wallin against Dillian White coming up huge fight now at the O2 um, you've got Demetrius Andrade in that quadruple world championship header you've got Jamie Mungir against Rosado with uh, Golden Boy You've got uh, Ryan Garcia, they'll make an announcement soon on his fight. Then you've got Devin Haney, I'm scheduling a big fight. Then you've got Lopez Cambosas. So our schedule is second to none on the zone. And that was a big fight for us to get. We're working on dates. You know, they always come on and go, all right, quickly, we're ready. It's like, oh, whoa, 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 we've just got it. Give us a chance to sell the tickets. Of course, it'll be this year. We're looking to do it sooner rather than later. And there'll be an announcement soon. I may can't put a tweet out saying Kell Brook now wants 149. He keeps moving. Uh, this fight is a busted flush. We pulled out of that fight. You know, I, I was in talks with Amir to make the Manny Pacquiao fight, actually, about four weeks ago with Sean Givens before he made his decision to retire. And we had that fight in great shape, ready to go in Dubai. Um, that was a fight I was interested in. And I want Amir Khan against uh, Conor Ben. The, case, the Kell Brook fight is just, you've got two guys sitting at home just saying, how do we make as much money as possible? Neither of them want it anymore. Neither of them really, especially Kell. You know, um, but listen, if they can get the money and they can get you to pay for it, then I'm sure people will. But we're, we're out of that fight. That's that's not that's not one for us. Just final one. Uh, David Price announces his retirement. Yes. A man you work with, a man from Liverpool. Uh, good to see him bow out on his own terms. Yeah, lovely fellow. I mean, look, he had some tough fights, didn't he? He always jumped in. He had some bad knockouts. He had some huge knockouts in his favour. Uh, lovely bloke, gentle giant. Um, always got a smile on his face. Very funny as well. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm pleased. You know, this pandemic has kind of stopped people who were probably on the verge of retiring or in the back end of their career really having the final swan song. But in a way, I don't mind that. So for me, I wouldn't like to see David go in there and, and you know, lose, 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 lose. Um, great fighter, great British uh, fighter, great, great uh, amateur as well. Uh, and um, wish him all the best. Hopefully it'll be a Saturday. Roll on Saturday. Eddie Hearn, IFL TV. Thank you very much. Thank you.